Wake up, little Susie, wake up. Wake up, little Susie, wake up. Where the movie was so hot, we fell asleep. Our goose is cooked, our reputation is shot. Wake up, little Susie, wake up, little Susie, it's time to go. Boy, Norm, what a piece of history this yeah, is. Yeah, this guitar is causing a little bit of an uproar. Um, you know, man. I mean, who didn't love the Everly Brothers, man? Yeah, I mean, how about the Beatles? That's why one of the, how about Paul one? Simon, Simon Garfield? Their biggest influences were the Everly Brothers. I think they influenced everybody, and still, they are the greatest singing duet. Ever. Their blend, their perfect, perfect blend was perfect, incredible. Their perfect. tunes were incredible. In the beginning, the tunes were written by Boudelot Brian and his and wife Felice. Felice. Brian, Felice. Yeah. And then they started writing their own tunes. Don started writing some tunes afterwards, and Phil wrote some tunes yeah. as well. So, uh, and they were just, they just knew how to write these tunes or do the tunes that those two part harmonies, they almost sounded like three parts. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was just so. And they had everything. They're really handsome. You know, well, I didn't know you kind of. Oh yes, but they well, had like perfect like Elvis hair, like every. Oh, yeah. Then they no, used they to wear the tuxedos bad. with the higher collars and with the string oh, ties, yeah. and they were. I thought they were the coolest thing. I mean, I mean that's one. I of mean, the first. I thought they were. I guess they were good looking guys. But which one did you prefer, the blonde or the brunette? I kind of like the blonde. I like. Phil. That's Phil. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, but Don was good. Don was there. Were, I mean, they looked almost alike, but Don. Looked like this mother, as fa and Phil looked like Ike, and yeah. Ike was a good guitar player. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I mean, so they grew up in a musical, and people don't realize they were on the radio when they were like six years old, you know, and and so they've been singing together since they're this big. There's a great documentary. Uh, there's yeah. a couple documentaries on them, and when Frank heard that we had this guitar in stock, Frank had to uh, come in because actually the last time you were in, you were playing. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's old fashioned, I think it was, on another guitar. And so when that, when I heard you doing that, I said, well, I gotta let Frank know I got this ever. Oh, no. And I haven't been in a long time because of all the stuff that's been going on and the few back operations and stuff like that. But this is really a, a treasure. And, and I think it's almost like it's too cool. I don't want to say to be in a private collection, but I mean, hey. no, but it is, it is kind of Rock and Roll Hall of Fame So let me ask material. you, you had, you had some back operations. Oh, yes, I did. How, and they worked out okay? Yeah, it was, it was the worst pain I was ever in in my life. I had, uh, all of a sudden, one day, my sciatic nerve, and I, I couldn't stand up straight. I was walking around in a walker. I look like an old accountant. Hey, Bubby, but I had, <laughs> I had a walker. Well, so we know the back operations, they turn out. How are the shock treatments going? The shock treatments have not kicked in yet. They're coming. <laughs> All right. They're coming. But this is really, a, a really, I mean, when I think of... Oh yeah, the and harmonies were just. And you know who produced that early stuff? Chet uh, Atkins. Chet Atkins, that's yeah, right. Yeah, and Out Chet, and because Don used to capo his guitar like at the fifth or sixth fret, so when you hear him doing, like, wake up, little. Yeah, he's yeah. playing a different chord inversion than than Phil. The first tune was "Bye Bye Love." Bye I think Bye it was Love. The first hit. You know, so. Bye.
Yeah, they're really cool. But by the way, I just got to tell you something. A lot of you guys, if you've never seen Frank live with his band and all that, Frank really is a spectacular singer. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to scratch his back too much because he gets excited with dogs and all I do of, and, and Phil Everly and all yeah. that. Yeah. You know, so, but uh, but truthfully, he's really great live. Thank and you. when you talk to the audience too, I think you know you do a great job. I mean, you're very funny and well, you know, you know it's you, part of it. You know, we grew up in an era, Norm, when it was really the entertainment business. When you watch like the Dean Martin roast, yeah. everyone's on there, and they're all like kind of. Right, they all know each other. I mean, yeah. but they're fun, and oh, yeah. they're all entertainers. Like when Milton Berle's breaking his chops, and General Omar Bradley comes out, yeah. and there was a thing. So I grew up. Even the Beatles were entertainers. They Absolutely. talked. They, they were, were very funny. Stones, sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they did have that, and it's kind of, and then it got into the thing with a lot of you know foul language on stage and gross stuff. But you know, I've seen the Stones many times. I've never seen them curse on stage. They'll do stuff, right, let's walk out, mate. But they never like, you know, F this. They don't do that. Yeah. No, they don't. They're Old really school, professional. Right? Well, they're professional. You yeah. know, Beatles too. Even the Kinks. Well, well when he great. does, he, and he does like these voice impressions. And the one that kills me the most is his brother. Because nobody, nobody sounds like his brother like him. The funniest thing is when he bought me that guitar. Yeah. And he's on the phone talking to me. I mean, I, it, talk about synchronicity. I'm in the store and he calls me and he goes, yeah, how you doing? Starts talking about Les Pauls. I go, you know, I happen to be in Norman's Rare Guitars. I'm looking at the, oh, yeah, uh, By the way. Because <laughs> he wouldn't tell me. Right. He goes, so, someone wants to he, buy he called me. before, I can't do the voice, but he basically said, listen, I want to buy Frank something that means that's meaningful to him. You know, we want to buy him a guitar. So Frank comes in and uh, and Sly calls and he says something like. But you were like, telling me, he, he says, wouldn't tell me who it was. Yeah, but he says uh, something like uh, to Frank, like, how about like a J200? Frank goes, what do you know about a J200? Yeah, there's one thing called a Les Jean, Les, Les Crane. No, <laughs> I mean Les Paul. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell's going on? Because I kept asking, I say, is there some girl I jumped their bones is going to buy me a guitar? I didn't know. No, that would be the one that's suing your ass. <laughs> that's what's suing me, right. Yeah. No, but it was like all of a sudden it was, and it was a, and he brought out the, when I, the case, it was done. Yeah. When he brought out the Sons of Pioneer, oh yeah, that was, was one of my favorite thing, groups. Yeah. yeah, and that guitar really, it's it's a, it's a Epiphone Emperor. It's really a perfect 1940s beautiful guitar. And uh, you know, and and I went, okay, I have Les Pauls, I have this, I have that, but I don't have that. I would yeah. just bought the case. I mean, the guitar and Norm, and watching my brother and Norm haggle over money is really funny. <laughs> so, yeah, well, why you gotta beat listening. me up? Why you gotta beat me up? You know? Yeah, he was like, give me, give me a few points on your next movie. He, he you know? was coming after. And then, what did he say about the whiskey? I'll give you a bottle of whiskey. Oh yeah, no, no. I said, you know, I've known Frank for about forty years. He said, I'll buy you a bottle of brandy or something like that. <laughs> to wash away the memory. Yeah. To wash away the memory. No, yeah. but. Uh, you know, but it was really, and I still, that's a wonder, but it really is a beautiful, uh, and I found the last Sons of the Pioneers, uh, Rusty Richards, uh -huh. and he has, now, if you ever saw the Sons of the Pioneers, they played, one, the guitar player played like a, looked like a triple O 28, and it had, like, pick cards up here and there, it's really weird, and uh -huh. I said, that's a great Martin, he goes, oh, it's not, that's not a Martin. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I have that guitar. He goes, it was custom made for him. You mean the one in all the Roy Rogers movies? That's it, you have it? So was that like a... Um, I don't know, it was custom uh, made. Well, there, there was a company uh, that made the Larson Brothers, that made Mowers and Euphonons. It and could Paris be. Because they were one of the only ones But the keys the go back this way. Could that be? Well, they did some slotted heads and stuff like that. It was, it's not slot head. Yeah. Well, it may have like the same kind of yeah. tuners like an OM-28 yeah, yeah. or, a, you know, band. So I'm going to go visit her. I'll take some pictures. I go, Rusty, what are you going to do? Of course, I'm like, hey, we're going to do it that thing. <laughs> well, I kind of like the ball was right. I said, yeah, like 90 years old. What are you going to do with it? Well, maybe you need it's to like have the same thing. negotiate for you. I, I'm going to bring you in. Thank you. <laughs> no, but that, I mean, you know, Sons of Pioneers were the most famous, you know, Roy Rogers. They did many, many yeah, movies. Fly in. And they're like, great, like they're like, you know, I'm an old cowhand from the Rio Grande, and my legs ain't bold, and the pizza up.
But they we played got most of it. it was most like of it, yeah. Heat wave in there. I did put heat wave in there. But you know, a lot of those guys were like uh, Bob Wills, Texas swing guys. So they're all really good musicians, like oh, fiddle yeah. and stuff. And there were guys. It was like generation after generation, different people. Oh, yeah, would yeah, leave yeah. the band. Well, they and die. People would come in. <laughs> they die. Okay. That's one yeah. way to leave a band. Yeah, you need a you bass know? player with that band. Just drop dead. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I mean, it's like it's, no. But the thing is, but he has all these cool guitars from them. I guess he's the last guy. I mean, yeah. he's uh, yeah, he's about. 80, very cool, real cowboy type, yeah. On the case that he got, it was kind of etched or engraved. Like almost wood burnt. It's a, into the case, Sons of the Pioneers. Oh, his car. As soon as he saw that, he was just I like, had a heart attack. I saw Frank was kind of starting to... I was kind of hoping it was a D45, but eh. <laughs> that, that would have been a whole different price. A yeah. pre war D45. Well, but he that was, I saw house. I had Frank by, no, he uh, had me. by some part of his body. No, that's when they called, like, uh, you had me at Hello. You had me at Sons of Pioneers. Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, but it's great. But, Norm, this really is spectacular. And we were talking about the color. So, this is, it's a green What's color. This? What's this here? Warning. Read it. I mean, it's. I can't that see. That was it. on there when we got it. What's this say? Warning. What the hell does that say? Who Frank has Stallone, beware, Frank Stallone. You're gonna glasses. What's that say? This is my buddy Greg over here. Greg, Greg is our uh, uh, attorney with bad eyesight. What's that say? <laughs> He'll read your next contract. Warning. Well, you heard that. Said. What else? Do yeah. not remove under penalty of law. This is perfect. No, I just made that up. It's oh, so well, slow. Let, I get, even get some young eyes All in right. here. Lemo, what, what do you say? Here? Warning. This item registered. And this item registered and traceable. Yeah, that's and bizarre. Yeah, that's original. And that I, you know, I told you the story on this. Right. Phil got right. pissed off at Don because Don was drinking. It, they they were pissed off at each other, and they were going to split up the last gig. Knott's Don, Berry Farm out here. Yeah, Don came in, and he was he had a bunch of drinks before he came in. He was just upset that they were going to separate, and they didn't talk to you for ten years. Uh, but. He started messing up the the act, you know. He started forgetting the words and the arrangements. And Phil took the guitar and put these cracks in it over here. So it's a very famous instrument. And the guy I got it from Dale, who was a guitar player that was playing with him, said to Phil, "Phil, you want me to take this and go have it fixed?" And Phil said, "Nah, just keep it." And this is real iconic. I mean, I got to tell you something. This this is really really serious. I mean, for me. It's, it's, I'm kind of like not trying to get emotional about, but I mean, this is something you saw growing up. Right. This it would be like Elvis's. Yeah. yeah. It's a, my childhood was filled with Everly Brothers. Yeah, yeah. I went out and bought a bunch of the record, Kathy's Clown. Oh, of course. Kind of I mean, How about Kathy's Clown? That's another great one. True Love Way? No, not that was Buddy Holly. But what was the one they did that was the slow one? Dream? Um, uh, Dream. Yeah. Dream. Uh, Kathy's Clown? Yeah. Don't want your love. But you know, Don oh, yeah, was really the lead singer. Yeah. Phil sang the high parts, but Don was actually more was, the lead yeah. singer. Mm -hmm. And maybe that could have been a bone. You know, there was one interview in one of the documentaries that I read about him that I saw, um, and Don basically said, "I was the lead singer. Phil was just the background singer, basically." Which was that, that, went was, over that well. would have been very cool, that cold to do to your brother or even to any side man. I mean, you know, it was a very cold thing to say. So they were obviously not getting along. You know, I think they were more cooled out when their mother and Ike were alive. Oh yeah. Because well, father, he was the he was the guy. You they know? signed a million dollar contract with the Cadence fledgling War, no, Warner Brothers. That's right, that's that album Roots. That's one of the very first million dollar contracts, ever, but it was over a 10 year period. Do you know I have that album? It's yep. called Roots. And so what ended up happening was, they never hardly received any of their their residuals and their money. They're out playing and all these one gig after another, six, seven nights a week, mm -hmm. traveling, staying in hotel rooms together, yeah. getting on each other's nerves, probably hitting on the same women together. I, I'm, I'm sure women were a big part of this somewhere. Jen probably had something to do with it. Jen, <laughs> oh, God. Jen is the instigator. The no. 
<laughs> yeah, you know the thing is they they had they listen they had issues like a lot of people you know speed on the road they had yeah. drug but issues. But you know you issues. wonder still like you know all these bands like the Rascals who I know yeah, you yeah, love yeah, and yeah, I love yeah. them too. You, you wonder why they can't just shake hands and go listen let's go play the game. I said that to Felix when I was in Nashville. I go what's up with that man? I mean why you're still alive? It's the original Rascals. I've also said that to Mark Farner, Grant Funk. Yeah. Why aren't you, you are Brand Funk? I mean, no one knows who Mel Shanker and Don Brewer are. You might, mm -hmm. he's from Detroit, but I mean, no one really does. And it's really weird. I was saying today, do you realize who's not in the Hall of Fame? Well, Paul Revere good. and the Raiders. Grassroots had about 15 hits. Three Dog Night had 20 some hits. Jethro Tull is not in. Emerson Lake and Palmer are not in. It's ridiculous. But I Nina Simone's in. Because yeah, they're in. No, they're, they're in now. Because they they really didn't get in for a long they time. They didn't get in for a while, and, and they are the not second happy. biggest duo of all. No, time. but they sold more records than anybody as a duo. They may have, but they they're considered to be the second biggest duo of all time behind the Everlands. Oh yeah, and then I think Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah, but they sold more records than all. Well, it's a different yeah, era. Well, and they've done it through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A decade after. Yeah, decade. and and the thing was, so Daryl, when you see his speech, he's a little bitter. He goes, you know what? It's really funny. How come like Chubby Checker's not here? By the, the way, stylistics. I saw Daryl and John maybe two or three weeks ago at a casino in Palm Springs. Oh, of uh, what's his name? Fantasy Springs. Yeah, I saw him there. You saw him there. The, the I've seen him ago? there. Yeah. Well, anyhow, they're great. They are unbelievable, and Daryl may be one of the greatest, if not the greatest. First of all, he's seventy-five. Singer. Seventy-five. He's years killing old. it. His voice is range. I know. It's unbelievable. Know. He's just really. And John's and in my students. documentary along with Storm and Norman. Yeah. And it's called Stallone Frank, that is. It's on Amazon. And Norman is in there. I had to put the Normster in there. And John Oates is in it, actually. There were a lot of people, a lot that, of people were in it that were yeah. really interesting yeah. that I didn't Duff know. Duff McKagan had, from. Uh, yeah, that Guns I didn't know you had a relationship yeah. with. Yeah, Richie, of course. Yeah. I don't know what so. Richie was thinking about his hair. That, that <laughs> he had like a weird hair thing, Ishka Bibble thing going, like with the straight bangs in the front. I don't know. Yeah, I, look, I've known Richie since he's. I love me. Richie, and I do too. Yeah, I mean, Richie's and the I best. love you in spite of you. In spite but, of me, yeah. <laughs> but it just was a bad. I had a bad hair day. You're allowed to have. You've it. had a few of them. I've had some you. serious. Bad in fact, <laughs> you had the worst hair day I remember is when you're on your hands and knees, and we have a friend of ours, Larry, who has a dog named Little Bear, who's part wolf and part <laughs> German Shepherd. I was having. Was a bad hair him, day. Yeah. And he was having a bad hair day, but the dog wasn't having any bar. He the loved dog didn't day. care. He ran his paws through my hair. Is that dog still alive? The dog's yes. well and good. He, we should call him and have him come over. But you know what? He's getting older. He's getting a little more rough as he's not as playful. No, actually, his, his taste has gotten better now. <laughs> so now he's chasing Lemo around, right? <laughs> he likes Lemo, though. He likes the young action. Well, I know you guys love Frank, and you know, thank you, Frank, for coming in. Oh, we'll always miss it's you been and all so. That. It's been a and long, long time. And Frank is a nut, and but we love Frank. Right. And yep. as I always say, when Frank is in, uh, his opinions in no way represent the management of Norm's Rare Guitar. Yeah, but, I get, but, uh, but I get ratings. He gets ratings, all right. You know, I I got to tell you something seriously, Norm. On my social media, people go, "When are you coming back to Norm's?" I said, "I'm not people coming back." Yeah, I'm not wearing a fucking Zorro mask, but I will come back. And, uh, what am I fucking? I suggested this. What am I, the mask. fucking Durango kid? They made me for one. Yeah, no, no, but no, but the thing is, uh, I haven't been here in a long time, you know, and it's really good to be back. I've known Norm like 35 oh, yeah. years, and I've what said you want it. A bottle of brandy. A bottle of brandy. <laughs> yeah. And I've. And I've said this many, many times in publicly. This is the greatest vintage guitar store in the world, without a doubt, because he's been doing it longer than them, and he's got stuff. I don't think he even knows what he has anymore. <laughs> well, I'm old. I mean, I think. Norm, you never said how many of them guitars two. are made like them. Two. two of the this. green with the black guard. Two black with the black guard. Two black with the white guard. And Albert Lee has one of the black with the white guard. And he says his guitar has got a lot more damage to it. It does. And this one, I said, man, those guys really didn't take care of their and stuff. You know what's funny? His is in the black case with the yellow lining. So it might be a little 1960 maybe. I think they were all 60. early 60s. I mean, he might this have replaced 50s, the case. Eh? This is 59. So, wow. I mean, that was at the height of their career. So um, I hope we don't want to show this too much because we don't want Gibson to get any ideas. And no, I've already this. talked to Gibson, and they should really do a reissue of this guitar because it's you if know they do. It's I'm historical. buying it. There you go. <laughs> oh, I would. I have a lot of J200s. I love them. I have a gold gold 
well, it's gold top, but the whole thing is gold with, with these same pick cards, but cream. I love it. You know, and I, I'm not I take it out there, don't I? Play the fucking thing. But anyway. So play us one more thing to take us out, you know. Okay. And Frank has really a fantastic voice, you know. Throughout the day. Oh, let's see. What, what should we do? What's to Play something you know for a change. <laughs> okay, I will. Let's see. What's, what's that one? Don't want your love. Norman Frank, the <laughs> Cleverly Brothers. Right here at Norm's Ragged Tires. You see me. Thank you. God bless. Little Bear. Have a great Christmas, everybody. <laughs> if this right is the Cleverly Brothers or the Cleavage Brothers, uh, listen, have a great Christmas, Norm. You, everyone, have a good Hanukkah. You too, buddy. Have a good Chinooka. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Peace. Love you all. Get a, get, a, get a still of Norm and I. Okay, I will.